Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a dice roll. Okay, so we've dropped it to basically no defenses there. Now for the final attack. Let's go. Yes, we did it. We've captured the entire city. Oh my goodness. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Sid Meier's Civilization 6, but not the regular Civ 6, which you all know and love. No, instead, we're playing the brand new Civ 6 Pirates mode. It's based off of that lovely and incredible game that you know I love. It's Sid Meier's Pirates. Oh my god. That game, I mean, it's filled with exploits that I love, but also it's just such a lovely piratey experience. Genuinely one of the golden ages of video gaming right in that little game, and I strongly recommend you pick it up if you can. But if you have Civ 6 and don't have that game and just want to experience it for free, well, they've done a lovely free update. And naturally, do you know what happens when the developers of this game add in new content? That's right, it's filled with millions of exploits, and oh my goodness, they are incredible. And I'm going to be showing off every single one of them to you today. It's going to be hilarious because in a game where you're meant to be playing a pirate leading a small band of pirates against other small bands of pirates just trying to survive on the harsh controlled waves instead of just being the regular pirate who worries about his one or two crewmates we will be the mega pirate with an infinite army of effectively self-duplicating wave attacking crewmates who will never ever die we will be able to control every single region on the map and not simply just be a naval power to be reckoned with but also have the largest military power in the entire game, despite it being a scenario entirely about controlling boats. Yeah, some things have gone slightly wrong with this update because you can completely and utterly break it. Anyway, we're going to be messing about with it today. And of course, you might notice that I'm sounding a little bit different today. That's because I've just moved and I'm in a new office and I actually don't even have a desk. I'm currently recording this entire video on the floor, which is, you know, enlightening to say the least. Yes, even with my absolutely terrible setup, I was able to find some lovely exploits in this video and trust me they are truly incredible so without further ado make sure you're sat back relaxed with a nice warm cup of tea in hand and as always if you're feeling particularly fantastic you can even like the video now the new pirates game mode is one which you're meant to play with friends online but last time i checked my friends will never ever play civilization 6 with me ever again after well the last video and the video before that and the video before that and also the video before that so today i'm going to actually have to play against the ai because the ai is my only friend in these trying times. Bam, here we are. As you can see, we're playing against the AI. I mean, we're not really going to be worrying about what the AI are up to. Instead, we're going to be focusing on our own game. Now, when it comes to the Pirates game, you have a choice of four factions. The Dread Pirate Mega Chat Battle Faction, the Privateer Pillage Your Trade Route Faction, the Explore Faction, or my favourite, the Spiffco Simulator Faction. That's right, it's the Hoarders, a faction with reduced unit maintenance, and you gain interest of gold per turn based off of the amount of gold you have. Now, naturally, this is where we're going to be able to absolutely destroy any balance that this game has, because, as everyone knows, we here at Spiffco are complete and utter hoarders. Now, without further ado, let's throw ourselves into this game, because, oh my goodness, we have some crazy things to show off today. Naturally, in this lovely scenario, we'll be playing alongside Spain, England, the Netherlands, and France, who will all be trying to stop piracy, as guess what? It's apparently rather annoying. However, little do they know, the mere existence of their ports is going to supercharge us into godhood status. Ah, oh, fantastic. We've just spawned into the game. We've spawned in the top right corner of the map and there's um really not much here. We've only discovered one port and it's really far away. Although we have apparently discovered Blackbeard's treasure map around here. Although honestly, normally in the start of this game, you would be chasing treasure. Us, however, no. Treasure is actually completely and utterly redundant. We don't want anything to do with it. Right, there we go. First move. All we need to do is find ourselves a city. Then once we have a city found, that's when things are going to get very fun. Oh, fantastic. I can see our first AI city. It appears to be an English port. Perfect. And they've even sailed a sloop out to meet us. Lovely. Now, before we actually try and take on any of the English factions or this AI-controlled buccaneer, we're just going to actually get close to the port itself. Now, we don't want to be so close that we actually get aggro from the port, but just close enough that I can pull off something pretty cheeky next turn. Now, in this game, your lovely pirate ships have crew, a melee strength, a range strength, movement strength, and attack range. All of that lovely stuff. But why on earth do we have crew? Well, the crew is a very powerful thing because you use the crew to land parties to bury treasure or find treasure and you can also use it to deploy land units and capture brand new ships. In order to capture this English sloop, you need to get it down to the point where it's weak and then expend a crew member on the sloop. Now we only have one crew member available so naturally we're not going to be doing much capturing. However if you want to gain more crew the game has it rather well balanced. You visit say Port Royal here and visit the tavern. Now you can only visit the tavern once so you can only gain one crew 
crew for this brigantine. So we'd have to sail to Port Royal and then this French port over here and then we'd have free crew so we can capture two ships. Lovely. And also when you're in a tavern you can get a treasure map and even a relic. And these relics are very powerful because they can completely break the game. Because at the moment we're spending seven gold per turn just maintaining our one ship. However there are relics which make it so that your ships are much more affordable. Now in our case we're going to go to Port Royal and visit the tavern. However we're not going to be constrained by the game balancing mechanics of only visiting a tavern once and instead go on the greatest pub crawl of history. You see we're going to visit this tavern which only is ever going to let us in once as many times as we like. By simply not enabling quick movement as soon as we press this button to move our ship into the port we'll have an option here to visit the tavern and every time we press the visit tavern button the game will class it as us visiting the tavern so we'll roll the chance of getting a relic, the chance of discovering a treasure map as well as also the guaranteed thing of gaining a crew. So let's see how many crews we can get, it's all based on how fast I can click a button. Luckily I brought my auto clicker. So we're just going to spam visit the tavern here. Now the game's audio does get a little bit funky because we've just gained 64 crew. Immediately this has revealed most of the world to us, most of the major ports, so if you're playing the swashbuckler faction this can pretty much instantaneously reveal the entire map to you, which is pretty good because that means you can basically win the game almost instantly. But most importantly we now have 64 crew in our ship, now that is lovely, but even more exciting because we visited the tavern so many times we've discovered all of these relics, aren't these just lovely? Now some of these relics are lovely and balanced, others are, well, pretty much absolutely terrifying because we have the Bonnie Brace pistols. This is simply a lovely relic which gives all of your units plus one attack. It's not actually fair. We're then going to add increased range and strength to our lovely ships and then we're also going to reduce the unit maintenance by three which actually stacks with our existing faction bonus of minus three to actually for some reason to reduce the maintenance of our lovely brigantine here which is normally sat at around 11 gold per turn. Actually maybe it's even more than that and just bringing it down to four. This is actually pretty exciting as well because any captured ships from this point on no longer will actually cost us any maintenance which means from this point on our gold is only going to go up based off of interest. And seeing as we have so much crew to spare we might as well just land a shore party for fun. What can these guys do? Well they can basically charge into the walls of Port Royal and just try and steal gold. What's also not particularly balanced is you can actually land them and then re-embark them immediately meaning they don't take any damage which is you know nice and fair. Anyway here come the French, no one likes those but more excitingly there's a massive buccaneer galleon over there. If we can capture ourselves one of those we're going to be able to pull off the next and most overpowered exploit in this game. Anyway we can attack twice this turn which means we're going to attack this French sloop twice, sail right next to it and then capture it so that it's our own. There we go, that's our own ship now and interestingly maintenance for units has not actually gone up. Isn't that strange? I mean it will immediately get sunk by the lovely gun batteries of Port Royal but you know there's not exactly much we can do to stop that. Anyway there we go, we managed to steal Port Royal and naturally gain some gold from it, lovely 500 gold from breaking down the walls of Port Royal and because of that we're now going to be making 20 gold per turn based off of just interest and things are looking good. I mean Port Royal is basically just going to sink every ship we get but you know that's fine it's completely acceptable. I did just basically charge that last ship to die because we didn't really need it and what I'm going to do is to try and chase down that lovely legendary pirate galleon because if we can steal it that's going to be a massive boost for us. Now there's a very interesting feature in this game which is because every time we visited a tavern we gained a treasure map we've gained 62 treasure maps which are scattered all over the world here um, and naturally this has kind of spawned more treasure maps than logically there ever could be which means that by literally just sailing around the ocean we will run into so much treasure. We've actually spawned in more treasure than this map can feasibly handle meaning it is exceedingly easy to get rich. Oh and also only we can see this, other players are not going to be able to see just how broken and messy we've made the map. Anyway next turn we're going to try and steal this enemy galleon because it looks absolutely beautiful. All right, this is mine, steal, steal, steal. We're going to chain shot it to lock it in place, give it a shoot and then captured, wabam. Now because this ship is a bit larger we do actually have to pay maintenance on it meaning we're now spending a devastating 13 gold per turn on units. However most of the AI here is just going to go bankrupt instantaneously as they don't have enough money to pay for their units and equally they don't have any of our stupidly overpowered relics. And naturally because we have the relic which allows us to attack twice in a turn we're now now able to just simply rock up to a boat and take it in a single turn, which is quite nice and powerful, very perfectly balanced of course. I'm sure the developers
developers really thought about that when they added that into the game. I mean, there's no way they'd allow one unit to attack three times in a turn, right? That just couldn't happen. I mean, we can rock up to this ship, attack it once, attack it a second time, capture, and that's ours, lovely stuff. And then next turn we have ourselves a brand new ship to just run around the map with. And also, because our galleon's now full strength, what I'll do is I'll sail this galleon over to the French port, where once again, this galleon is going to absolutely raid the French port for all of the many crew members that it could have. So let us sail our lovely galleon over to Petit Goave, where once again I'm going to start spam clicking away on the visit tavern button so that we can fill up this galleon with crew. Ah, lovely, there we go. We now have 57 crews on this galleon, and now there are 104 buried treasures somewhere on this map. Although, because there's not really enough landmass, they actually just yeet the treasures into the ocean after a while. So whilst we have a lovely bit of buried treasure there, we also have floating treasure, if you can believe it. Now, I mean, there is just a massive line of buried treasure here. There's a buried treasure pile here, here, and here, just because we've been to so many taverns, each of which will yield 200 gold. What an absolutely lovely infinite amount of wealth to have. Oh, now my brigantine can get a promotion, meaning that it's now gained plus 10 combat strength versus naval units, which is a lovely bonus to have. But you'll notice there's an option down there just past the brigantine, which is the pirate code, which grants this boat plus one additional attack per turn. Now, this is rather interesting <laughs> because that means our lovely brigantine here is no longer going to only be able to attack two times in a turn. No, instead it will be attacking for the lovely and balanced total of three times in a turn. Now, admittedly, it does take three level ups in order to actually reach that point. But if you actually grab yourself a sloop, you can level up to that point even faster. That's right. It's only the second level up on the sloop, which grants you that lovely, insane bonus. So you can have level two sloops just yeeting their way around the ocean, doing incredible amounts of damage per turn. Of course, there's way more buried treasure under here. So our lovely gold stacks are up to 1,800 gold. And that means we're gaining 54 gold per turn just off of our lovely base natural interest. I mean, we're only spending 17 gold per turn on actual units upkeep, which is very, very affordable. Now, because our lovely main brigantine is so powerful now, we can just simply one shot a brigantine and then immediately capture it, which is an incredible amount of damage to do. I mean, just take a look at the galleon here. This is effectively a melee boat, which does 52 damage, but its second level up option is to give it a second attack each turn. I mean, just why? How is this acceptable? Who thought, yep, you know what? This seems perfectly normal. Anyway, our new brigantine can do several attacks per turn. We're actually just going to have it heal up. What we'll do is we'll steal the other brigantine, which has come nearby. Lovely stuff. So that now means we have three very powerful battle boats. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, I just spoke to the pirate boffins over at Spivco, and they've told me because of our lovely interest rates and just how much money we're making, we're going to be able to do a once in a lifetime opportunity. That's right. The first 7,000 people who like this video will receive their very own Spanish treasure fleet. Each Spanish treasure fleet contains gold valued anywhere between one to 700 million pounds. Your treasure fleet is estimated to arrive anywhere between the 16 to 17 hundreds. So please keep an eye out. Anyway, I've got some more pillaging to do so that I can keep these interest rates lovely and high. Now, what I love is just watching our total income go up every time I find a bit of treasure just floating in the sea because it's 200 gold. And every time we get 200 gold, well, our natural income per turn goes up by over five. Oh my goodness. Anyway, we're just going to waltz this lovely unit into the jungle to just discover where I've accidentally spawned even more treasure. Now, the thing is, there are treasure fleets, which are like massive, really incredible wealth ridden boats which are floating around. But the thing is, they actually take a little bit of a fight to get a hold of. Not that fighting in this game is actually a challenge when you can one shot most ships in a single turn of combat. But there's also the added challenge of just actually having to fight your opponents instead of just stealing all of the mass spawned gold and various plunder which you found on the floor. Now, once again, what I'm going to do is sail my lovely capital ship into the port of Santa Marta, where we are once again going to visit the tavern a metric bunch of times. So the crew is now up to 96, just to see if there are any more relics which I actually like. Nope, none of these are particularly fantastic. I suppose we might as well actually get rid of this lovely maintenance reduction because it's not going to make much of a difference for us if we're spending 44 gold in our units. And I guess we can just deploy a few of our crews to shore. Lovely stuff. Plunder a bit of gold. And now what we're going to try and do is actually take an entire settlement. Now, the thing is, when you take a settlement in this game, all you do is you knock down the walls and run away with the gold. You physically can't actually take land. Because, I mean, that would be crazy if you could take land. There's just one slight issue. You actually can take land. So what we're going to do is just blow up the walls just a little bit. There are some pretty fun things we can do. Now, what you're going to do if you want to actually steal a settlement in this game, you 
can't let the walls be diminished because if the walls are diminished then effectively you can't get anything from the city no what we want to do is instead destroy the health beans we didn't manage it sadly and the walls have just been reinstated which i mean i guess is fine because we're going to be able to grow in some experience on it but still i'm fantastic because i've just killed an infamous pirate although they weren't very infamous because they died in a single turn of combat against our brigantine this brigantine can now gain the pirate code which is plus one attack per turn which is i don't know how this was passed in the game i don't actually know how it was allowed because it just doesn't make sense it's just completely and utterly unfair <laughs> three attacks in a single turn is just too much damage it i mean how actually how has this been allowed now you see there's a single sloop here and not only are we very likely to accidentally one shot it but i mean it's just dead no matter what we do it's just going to instantly die i mean i suppose we can capture it but what's the real point <laughs> and once again the ai has sailed another rival sloop out into the sea which is just going to get immediately shot i still have another attack waiting and i can just immediately still leave i just don't understand this game please why how how was this okay who said you know what this is fine anyway we're going to uh, just sail into the tavern again gain some infinite crew on this brigantine once more just so that we're up to really terrifying quantities of treasure map there we go 166 treasure maps around the world now with every single relic this game actually allows oh no this is exciting a netherlands treasure ship meant to be one of the most powerful ships in the game well we're just going to sail our one ship over one shot it then uh, immediately set about doing whatever we like i guess we can blow up these walls twice well, bam there we go that's those walls broken then i suppose we can just sink this sloop over here as well i mean our money at this point is just unstoppable we have six thousand gold in the reserve our crew morale is insane because of just how much gold we have i mean why would you rebel when there's this much gold flowing in your lovely boat oh look it's another treasure ship right we're bam and we're bam there we go that's a one-shot treasure ship <laughs> oh goodness now the reason why i love sloops is because after your first upgrade as you can see you get the bam move after attacking but then your next upgrade is yet another attack so you can have sloops doing three attacks per turn so sure whilst they might only have a range strength of 47 against a brigantine's 51 if they're able to attack three times per turn i'd definitely prefer to have that than a brigantine which can only attack twice per turn now a great way of generating infinite score is off of the system of fighting because every time there's a bit of combat in this game you gain a single score point now why is this useful for the exploit of infinite crew well simply every turn a settlement's walls will open fire and do some damage if there is one of your units in range of that settlement well they're going to shoot that unit be it a random peasant shore party infantry standing next to the city wall every time that peasant unit gets hit we ourselves gain one lovely fighting point it doesn't need to actually fight back it just needs to be shot at and that's enough to actually win the game because as we have 93 crew we can simply sail around all of the various settlements dropping off large quantities of men simply to be shot at to put us at a point where we are basically unstoppable and fantastic a galleon now has the lovely pirate code bonus meaning it can attack three times per turn this is a melee boat okay and it can fight three times per turn anyway we're well, bam that's one shot with our brigantine and lovely stuff i mean at this point game's over if you were ever playing this with friends they don't actually stand a chance they can't actually fight back and there's simply no way to stop you once you've made this much money well here we go fantastic it's the legendary pirate steed bonnet with the buccaneers uh, now sadly he is going to just immediately die and actually look there's henry morgan himself is also here right well let's kill steed bonnet then let's immediately kill this next boat there we go i mean heck we can even sail in reinforcements why not oh wow there we go so henry morgan's just down to effectively one bloke now don't think he's likely to survive his encounter with us especially considering i'm going to chain shot him so he can't escape oh henry morgan one of the most famous pirates of all time is about to get yeeted out of this entire universe off of the back of one heavily upgraded brigantine and there we go that's a dead famous pirate ah lovely i mean this is just absolutely hilarious nothing about this is fair oh i love this game i really do i mean this is basically the entire first exploit the fact that you can have infinite crew infinite relics and then all of your units are just completely utterly overpowered there is just no way to stop us we are the most overpowered pirate in the entire universe the lovely boffins at spivco with their lovely way of generating interest off of money will basically allow us to just do this as much as we like without even having to worry about actually you know burying treasure or doing anything with treasure actually yeah that's right guys we can bury treasure as you can see we have a shore party here we can spend 600 gold to bury 30 treasure well so there we go we get 40 points for burying treasure and it only cost us 600 and i mean 600 is pretty easy to come by because i mean there's 600 right there there's 600 right here and then every time we get 600 we get interest off of that money anyway you can see where the spiral 
Carroll goes, this game, at this point, it's over. Completely unfair, completely broken. I love it. Absolutely love it. Well done, developers. Best free update you've done. Pat yourselves on the back. I really like what you've done with it. Oh, God. Now, what I want to show off next is my next favorite exploit for this brand new update. But I'm going to actually have to change over to the Dread Pirates faction because I'm going to need their increased combat strength in order to steal a settlement. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in a moment. Brace yourselves for an even cheesier exploit. Now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second exploit which I'd like to show off. This is the Accidentally Taking Towns exploit. Um, it can be done with basically the lovely Dread Pirate faction because when you use the Walk the Plank action, all of your units gain plus five combat strength for five turns, making them nice and powerful and giving them the ability to effectively accidentally blow through walls. Although honestly, sometimes you don't even need it. You just kind of need the settlements to be a bit large enough for you to actually jump on in because their populations are nice and big. Now, as you'll notice, something's slightly wrong with this game, and that is that, uh, well, these two settlements here don't have names above them. That's because we technically control them. This is the settlement of Obeans, which is giving us one science per turn, uh, as well as 0.5 culture, which is lovely. Um, I don't think we're going to be gaining much science from the actual settlement, considering we don't actually have a research tree. But what's interesting about the settlement is that we're now able to actually spend some of our gold, which is usually just a resource that you accumulate. But no, we can now spend it. We can spend 3,200 gold buying ourselves a lock promotion class galleon underscore name. We can buy brigantines for 1,600 and we can buy sloops for just 800 gold. And heck, if you're feeling nice and fancy, you can even pick yourself up a trader. You know what? Let's do that. Can we set up a trade mission? I don't see why not. I mean, most of our civilian units like these settlers here are basically just convertible crew members, which I'm pretty sure we can't actually use to settle cities. No, there's no way the game's going to let us settle a city, but we might as well find out. <laughs> oh God, please game, you can't let me. Anyway, I'm going to try and take the next settlement to just show off how broken it is. Although in these settlements, we do actually physically control them, meaning we can actually build ourselves an encampment, which is what I'm doing now. You can build granaries, ancient walls, if you like, or you can even spend 20,000 turns building a shore party. I'm not sure why you do that, considering you can make free per turn by just visiting a tavern at least. Anyway, let's end our turns, but I hope you love our brand new cities because aren't they just absolutely beautiful? I mean, they have kind of broken the AI a bit because the AI doesn't actually know how to react. Now, the AI is recommending I build a settler in my brand new city of I Think It's Broken, and this is actually a pretty decent city because it's making 5.7 production per turn, meaning we could build an aqueduct in just five. I think I'm going to actually continue with the harbour district. I just need to kind of kill the boat sat on the harbour. I suppose I can just bypass this process by buying myself a sloop. There we go. Oh, can I set up a trade route? I can set up a trade route. Okay, my traders go to go back and forth between I Think It's Broken and the town of Obeans. Lovely. That's going to really increase the construction in our up-and-coming empire. What's great is we also make gold off of our cities. We're making 3.6 gold from cities. It's not much, but it's um, it's honest work. Wait, what's that? A Spanish settlers just spawn next to our city. What? A Spanish settler? <laughs> what is going on here? I haven't seen a settler in this game before. Why is it next to my city? What is going on? Okay, I mean, I can't really complain considering I've done most of the damage here, but, you know, I think, uh, Sid Meier's, your game's looking a little bit funky. What on earth is the AI doing with their settler? What are they doing? Why is he there? Can I capture him? Yes. Right, I've captured an enemy settler now. Can't wait to settle my city here next turn. That's going to be great. A really good spot. Oh my god, we can found a new city. <laughs> right, settler found a brand new city. Will it destroy the rainforest tile? That's fine. Uh, so this is the pirate scenario. Well, there's now become the brand new you are the colonizer scenario because whenever we settle a new city, we get a free sloop. Wow, that's really worthwhile. Uh, so this is our city of Campeche. Um, it's no longer going to be Campeche. What are we going to build? Let's build ourselves a harbor. Yeah, that sounds good. Plus two gold in the empire. That's lovely. We can just fortify ourselves up a bit. Now, if you want to actually capture cities yourself, it's actually surprisingly easy to do and much easier to pull off if you're using the crew exploit because with your additional crew, which I've loaded up into this lovely boat here, you're able to surround a city. And when a city is fully surrounded so that it has no available tiles nearby, it goes under siege. And when under siege, it can't really heal, but also you do more damage to the town center, the actual source of the health. Meaning when we attack with this boat here, we do 17 damage to the outer defensives and 22 damage to the health of the city. Now, what we want to do is get the garrison health beneath the fortification health, because as soon as that happens, the entire city is ours. So we do 20 damage there, 30 health, 23 damage to the defenses, 40 health there. Now, this is the challenge. What we need to do is kill the town without dropping the defenses. And that is going to be a really big challenge here, but I think we can do it. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a dice roll. Okay, so we've dropped it to basically no defenses there. Now for the final attack. Let's go. Yes, we did it. We've captured the entire city. 
city. So now we get the option, do we want to keep Petit Grove or do we want to raise it? Naturally, we're going to hit keep city. Uh, it's going to increase our warmongering penalty, but I mean, we're pirates. Um, pirates stealing cities from colonial powers is generally going to cause a warmongering issue. So yes, if you want to capture any settlement in the game, simply go up to your local port, visit a million taverns, then use those crew to surround that very same port and then simply siege it down. And then once you have a control of a city of your own, you'll not only be gaining gold per turn, but you'll also be able to spend your gold to gain effectively a never ending supply of boats. Oh, and you can also settle your own cities now if you really want to. I mean, we might as well settle a city over there. That would be beautiful. Look at it. It's a lovely island spot. Yes, let's buy ourselves a lovely settler. And then in six turns time, we can plonk it down over there. I'm afraid this game will be over way before then. But the perks of having your own cities don't just end there. Because you now actually control territorial water, your units will naturally heal each turn in that water, which means we can buy this tile here and suddenly this sloop will now heal next turn without us having to press the careening button. And also when you capture a city, you can also revisit the tavern as many times as you like. So what we can do is move the brigantine out and then move the brigantine straight back in and add some additional crew to the ship. There we go. Up to 87 crew for that one little party boat. Oh my God, what have we done? What have we actually done? <laughs> this is a complete and utter mess, but I love it. I really do. Oh, thank goodness. Right. I'm pretty sure the game ends when we end the turn now, which is honestly what I what I want because we've built ourselves an encampment. Okay, look at this. It's an encampment. We can fight off enemy boats with it. There's zero turns remaining now though, so let's buy ourselves a barracks um, and uh, an armory as well, of course. Yep, that's actually going to increase the production of this town, meaning we could build ancient walls very quickly. Lovely, isn't that just lovely? Now this town is a little bit more beans because, well, we're going to need to spend 900 turns repairing anything. Honestly, our fleet now is absolutely massive. And these sloops, which can attack three times per turn, are just really dumb and overpowered as well. I love them. Anyway, let's just sink all of these other ships near us because, I mean, it's the end of the game. We might as well. We can walk our settler over to the place where we want to settle it. And there we go. Victory. I am a pirate king now. Oh, that was just fantastic. I love that. Look at that. The day is ours. We've managed to win a score-based victory. Oh, what a lovely scenario. Now, both of these exploits can be used with any faction, and they're all completely and utterly overpowered. I strongly recommend you invite your friends over for a game of this, and then watch as they never play games of you ever again. Ah, the exploiter's dream. Anyway, as always, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and if you've enjoyed some Sid Meier's Pirates today, then feel free to give the video a like, as it does massively help us out. And hey, if you want to see another exploit video, hop down to the comment section and vote. I'll give you a few choices. Option A will be a lovely Oblivion exploit. Option B will be becoming God in Spore and creating some lovely abominations. And Option C would be yet another classical and lovely, completely and utterly broken Civilization 6 exploit. Hop on down to the comment section and vote. And heck, as always, if you've enjoyed watching today, then feel free to give the video a like as it does massively help us out. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing because this week's subscribing guarantees pirate citizenship. That's right, you get to become a citizenship of our brand new pirate empire, which is recognized by no other wider world empire, actually. In fact, no one recognizes it, but don't worry, I'll know that you, brand new subscriber, are a pirate in your heart. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who this month have funded the purchase of a desk so that I'm actually able to record videos properly again. Ah, oh, thank you, patrons. I really needed that one. Anyway, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.